Hey guys, so today we're going to be doing our last and final episode of our series on the New Testament about the book of Revelation. Now, what is the book of Revelation? The book of Revelation is the very last book in the entire Bible and the last book of the New Testament. And it talks about what's going to happen at the end of the world and how it's all going to go down and the final battle between God and Satan. It's an incredible book. It's crazy. Even non-Christians love reading Revelation because it's like, it sounds like a fantasy story, but it's not just a fantasy story. It's really going to happen and it's serious stuff and it might be a little scary but it's epic so you gotta watch this. Now you see we've we've looked at first episode the Christmas story how Jesus was born, second episode the life of Christ how Jesus lived, third episode was about the Easter story how Jesus died and came back to life, our fourth episode was about the early church and how the early Christians spread the good news everywhere and now our fifth episode is about Revelation, the book of Revelation, the end of the world. So I hope you'll enjoy and learn something on our final episode of our series. So let's start. So you see our first point here <clears throat> is Jesus giving seven letters to John. Now do you remember John? John was a disciple of Jesus. Remember from our last episode? Well I'll just show you if you don't remember. Yeet. So you see Remember John was in jail with Peter for preaching the good news? Well, you see, John was here again. Now, many years had passed, and by this time, John was very old. You can see he has white hair. And what had happened was that John was preaching the good news. But the Roman emperor hated this. So he banished John to an island in Greece called Patmos. Anyway, this it was a very small island. But while he was there... He was, the Bible says he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. So he was praising the Lord and he was praying and on a Sunday. And then all of a sudden, he heard a voice behind him. And he turned around and he saw a man. And this man had white hair and he had a long robe on. And he had eyes that looked like fire. He had a sword coming out of his mouth. Around his chest there was a golden girdle and his feet were like brass and in his hand he was holding seven stars and John was like well who is this but then he realized it was Jesus the Lord Jesus Christ in his glorified form while Jesus was on earth he looked like a normal person but in heaven he looked so different his eyes were like a flame of fire and he told John to write seven different letters to seven different churches after Jesus gave the seven letters to John and John wrote them down and sent them to the seven churches, all of a sudden the voice told John, come up hither. So all of a sudden he was taken by the Holy Spirit into heaven and he saw a man sitting on a throne right here. It was, he was glowing like a jewel and around his throne there was a green rainbow that looked like an emerald and there were seven lamps as you can see seven lamps of fire and out of the his throne as you can see there was water flowing and then all these angels and people started worshiping this person sitting on this throne and john realized it was god himself god was being worshiped by these people and john himself saw the incredible glory of god so this is the thing you got to remember the amazing thing about heaven is not that it's, you know, so amazing and so fun and we're going to have such a great time. The best thing about heaven is God. He's the ultimate reward. And when John saw him, he saw he is so amazing. And that's what he saw. And then he saw this. John saw a lamb come. And this lamb had seven eyes. And he also had seven horns. And he had a scar as if he had been killed. And he was shining too. And John said, who on earth is this? But he realized this was Jesus. Remember John the Baptist from our episode, The Life of Christ? Well, if you don't remember, I'm going to show you. Yeet. So remember, see here, John the Baptist. He baptized the Lord Jesus. When John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He said Jesus was the Lamb because just like a lamb, Jesus was sacrificed for the whole world. Back to Revelation. Yeet. So you see. Jesus is the Lamb of God. And this was a vision, a picture of Jesus. The wound showed that he had been wounded. And then all of a sudden, John saw millions and thousands of angels. He said 10,000 times 10,000 of angels praising the Lamb and worshiping him. They said, honor and glory and power and blessing be to the Lamb and to the one who sits on the throne forever and ever. And then, well, yeah, that's what he saw. And so this is awesome because it shows us something really important. When all the Christians and the angels in heaven were worshiping the Lamb, which is Jesus, and they were worshiping God, it showed what we should do. We should be giving glory to God because there is nobody as powerful and as great as God. God deserves to be glorified and lifted up 
forever. Because he has done such amazing things. He is filled with grace and mercy and power. And he has given us his son. I mean, Jesus, the Lamb of God, died for our sins. It's incredible. He died so we could be at peace with God. So the angels were praising Jesus because they said, You have bought people from every country to you. And John saw a huge crowd of people from every country and every language and every tribe and every culture and every family praising the Lamb of God because people from all over the world had become Christians and they were praising the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, for saving them from Satan with his blood. And we should do the same. And something just happened with my throat, but we should do the same thing. We should praise the Lord Jesus. Now you see, this is our fourth point. In God's hand, there is a scroll and the scroll had seven seals. A seal is basically a stamp, as you can see here in the middle, a scroll with seven seals. And a seal is like a stamp, and you can't open something if the seal's on it. You have to break the seal. So an angel said, who is worthy to open the scroll and break the seven seals of it? And nobody in heaven or in earth was able to open it except the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. So every time the Lamb went and opened one of the seals, a new punishment of God was unleashed on the earth. Now you see... The first, the first seal was broken, and then John saw a man riding on a white horse. This was an evil man that went to take over the whole world, but we'll learn more about that later. The second horse was a man riding on a red horse, and a huge sword was in his hand, and he took peace away from the earth, and there were wars everywhere. And then there was a third horse, and he was riding on a black, this guy was riding on a black horse, and all of a sudden there was great famines. In other words, there were people were starving to death all over the world. And the fourth horse he was riding, and his name was Death. And you see this orange fireball behind him? The Bible says hell was literally following this guy. So all kinds of death from diseases and wars and famines and droughts and floods and, and you know, different animals killing people. There was death everywhere. This was God's punishment on the world. Then John saw more punishments from God. He saw many of the people of God killed and he saw their souls asking God to punish the people who had killed them. And then, the sixth seal was opened, and John saw crazy stuff. He saw the whole sky was rolled away like a scroll, and he saw hail falling to the earth, and he saw, or, yeah, he, sorry, not hail, but he saw stars of heaven falling to the earth, and he said there was a gigantic earthquake, and then after that, he saw an angel with a censer, which is basically like a golden spoon that he, they used to use to worship God, and he had fire in this censer, and the angel threw the fire into the earth, and when he was thrown into the earth, there was lightning, and there was thunder, and there was an earthquake, and this was the punishment of God on the earth. This was not the end of the punishment of God on the earth. It got even worse. In our fifth point, you can see what happened. The Bible says, John saw more trumpets. Okay? Or he saw angels blowing trumpets. And each one of them had a trumpet. And there were seven of them. So seven trumpets were blown. Seven more punishments of God on the earth. Every time an angel sounded a trumpet, there was a new punishment of God on the earth. The Bible says, the first angel sounded and... There followed hail and fire mingled with blood, as you can see up here. And it destroyed the earth. And the Bible says all green grass was burnt up. And then, all of a sudden, there was another angel that sounded. And one third of all the ocean became blood. And then another angel sounded. And the Bible says a huge star fell from heaven that was burning like a lamp. Which is kind of, I guess, like a meteorite. And it fell in the rivers. And it poisoned the rivers. And when people drank their water, turned on their taps and drank their water, then they died because of this poisonous stuff in their water from the meteorite. And then another, the fourth angel blew his horn, his trumpet, I mean. And then the sun and the moon and the stars turned dark and nobody could see anything. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. And then the fifth angel sounded and this crazy thing happened. Demons were released from the bottomless pit of hell and they had faces that looked like people and they had uh, teeth like lions and they had hair like women and they had bodies like horses and they had wings like grasshoppers and they had tails like scorpions and these demons were released to torture people for five months and then the sixth angel sounded and John saw horses with the faces of lions and these these horses had the faces of lions and the tails of snakes and they were breathing fire and there was 200 million of these horses. So a gigantic army of these fire-breathing lion snake horses were released on the earth and men were punished and killed and humans were dying like crazy. 
okay? Now, this could mean two, two things. This could mean that, you know, there might fire fall down from God, or it could mean that there's going to be a lot of war, which is probably more like it. But anyway, you can see God was punishing the world with these crazy things. And then the seventh angel sounded, and then this is what happened. The Bible says, John saw the Ark of the Covenant in heaven, which was a golden box that God used to live on in the time of the Israelites. And from the Ark of the Covenant, there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. Now, so far, we've seen 14 of God's punishments on the earth. We saw the evil man who overtook the earth with the seven scrolls, and the other man on the other horse who, who caused war, and the other man on the other horse who caused famine, and then we saw the, the horse with death on it that was sweeping death all throughout the world, and then we saw the saints of God being killed, and then we saw the world and how he was shaken and how the sky rolled away and stars were falling from heaven and crashing on the earth, and then we saw how when the angel threw fire into the earth, there was lightning and all this stuff and then we saw with the trumpets the, the sun and the moon and the stars turned dark and, and one third of the ocean turned into blood and the meteorite fell and the waters were poisoned and then we saw hail and fire mingled with blood falling on the earth burning up all the green grass and then demons were released from the, the, the bottomless pit of hell to torture people and then there was an army of snake horse lion things breathing fire destroying people 200 million of them and then we saw when the ark of covenant the Ark of the Covenant was revealed in heaven. There was lightning and thunders and earthquake. I mean, what's going on? This is the thing. We've seen in our last four episodes how much God loves people. I mean, oh man, the love of God is amazing. But Jesus said something. He said this, The light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So God did something so amazing. God became a human to save people. Glory to God. That's what he did. And he died for us. We saw that with the story of Jesus and all that. And he came back to life. That was God's love. We didn't deserve it. We deserved to die and go to hell, but he did that. But listen, even though God has done such an amazing thing for all the people of the world, even when people hear this good news, they still say no to it. They reject the light of God and they decide to live in darkness. And God is very gracious and very merciful and he waits for people to repent and come to him. But it takes so long and people still say, no, I don't want it. And when you, even when we tell people the good news, maybe you tell your friends about the gospel of Jesus. I hope you do. And they say, no, I'm part of a different religion. I'm part of a different culture, which really doesn't matter because Jesus is for everybody. So it's really dumb when people say that. But anyways... People might say stuff like that, and when you talk to them, they still want to sin. They still want to get drunk. They still want to lie. They still want to do all kinds of sins. And this is what Jesus said. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And God, even though he's loving, he's also just. He is angry, and he is fair. And when people do these things, he must punish them. The Bible says God is angry with the wicked every day in the book of Psalms chapter 7. So God is not just going to let sin go on forever and say, well, I love you guys too much. One day, it's going to come to a stop. And this is what John was seeing. He was seeing the punishments of God falling on the earth. Even now, we're seeing it start. But these 14 punishments, 14, that's not 14, but 4, and then team. Anyways, these 14 punishments John saw, they are going to come. The seven seals are going to be broken. The seven trumpets are going to be blown. And God is going to punish the earth. God is angry. Lots of people will tell you, God is loving. God is kind. He'll never hurt anybody. That's not true. God will punish. God will destroy the workers of iniquity. Iniquity means sin. God is going to destroy people who break his law. And the Bible says the Lord is furious and he revenges and he will take vengeance on his enemies. In the book of Nahum, chapter 1. In our sixth point, we see some interesting stuff. Now we see, uh, there's a woman here. This is what John saw. He saw a woman who was clothed with the sun, as you can see. She had a crown of 12 stars on her head, and she was giving birth to a baby. And she was crying, and she was also standing on the moon. Crazy stuff. But then all of a sudden, he saw a red dragon that had seven heads. And he didn't only have seven heads. The Bible said he had seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and he threw the stars of heaven to 
the earth. And the Bible says the dragon stood in front of the woman which was ready to be delivered. He wanted to devour her child as soon as it was born. But when the baby was born, he escaped the dragon, as you can see here. And he was given a crown and he went up into a cloud and he was given a rod of iron, as you can see here that he's holding, to rule the nations. And the devil, which is the dragon, the dragon represents the devil. He could not get the baby. The baby was safe in God's hands. And the woman escaped as well. And the dragon Satan was extremely mad and went to kill all the rest of her children. Now, what on earth does this mean? Well, you see, the dragon represents Satan, obviously. The baby represents Jesus. But who does the woman represent? Well, Jesus' mother was Mary, right? So it must represent Mary. But that doesn't make any sense, because where did Mary have to escape to? And this book is all, the book of Revelation is all about the end of the world. So you see, when we think about it, we can realize that this is the country of Israel. So in the end of times, God's country, Israel, is going to really be attacked by Satan. And Satan is going to try to destroy it. And also try to destroy all the people who keep the commandments of Jesus Christ. But Jesus, because basically Israel brought Jesus into the world. Because Jesus was an Israelite. And Jesus, the Bible says, he rules everything. And it won't be clearer. It will never, it is clear that Jesus rules everything now. But it will never ever be any clearer than at the end of the world. And you see, Satan cannot destroy Jesus. And he could never destroy Jesus. But at this time, Satan is going to be very angry. And God is angry, as we saw with the seven seals and the seven trumpets. And Satan's anger is also going to come down on the earth. And John was seeing all this stuff in confusing symbols and dreams. And we can't understand everything. Everything that he saw but we can understand a lot of it and we can also understand this now in this point here we can see there's a crazy animal the Bible says John was standing on the beach and he saw an animal a beast great beast rise out of the sea he had seven heads ten horns upon his horns ten crowns he looked like a leopard his feet were like the feet of a bear his mouth was like the mouth of a lion and he ruled the world and all the people of the world said who is like the beast who is able to make war with him and they worshiped him because he was doing great miracles and the bible says this satan the dragon gave him power to rule over the world and do those miracles and then john saw a second beast come out of the earth and this beast he looked like an innocent little lamb with little lamb horns then john heard him talk and he sounded like a dragon and the, and the this second the second beast and the first beast they worked together and they worked together to do terrible things and they all spoke against god and they blasphemed god and they did miracles and then they started something new and they all did this through the power of satan and they started something new they told everybody you have to wear on your hand or on your forehead 666 if you don't wear it you can't buy food or you can't do anything you can't buy or sell you'll starve to death and anybody who doesn't get this mark on the right hand or forehead is going to be have their head cut off so everybody got this number 666 on their right hand and on their forehead but the bible says if anybody gets this mark on their hand or forehead they're going to go to hell and never get out so it's a very bad thing and then they built a statue of the original beast and they said everybody has to worship this and that statue all of a sudden came to life through the power of satan and spoke terrible things against god now, this might be the most confusing of them all. What on earth is going on? Some leopard with, like, all these heads and then some, like, little lamb coming out of the earth and, like, you know, making a statue that comes back to life and wearing 666 on your hand or your forehead. I mean, like, what is going on? You gotta slap your forehead because you're like, man, I'm confused right now. But you don't have to be because the Bible's pretty clear. You see, when you read the Bible, you gotta put it together like a puzzle piece. You gotta put it together because... You're not going to understand if you just read this one part. You got to put it all together, man. You got to know how to do it. You got to know how to work it. And then when you see it, you're like, wow, God's word is amazing. But anyway, we're going to explain what this is about. The first beast who looked like the leopard, remember this one? Right there. That one right there, see? Uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, but yeah. Anyways, the first beast who looked like the leopard, the Bible says he's called the Antichrist. What is the Antichrist? The beast. He, the Bible talks about him in Daniel chapter 8, Daniel chapter 11, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and also in the book of 1 John chapter 2. It says he's going to be a very evil world leader. He's just going to be a normal human. Some people think he's going to be Satan incarnated, a Satan like a, in human form. That's not, gonna, that's not true. The Bible says Satan helps him, so that wouldn't even make sense. The Bible says he's going to be a great evil world leader who's going to come out of Europe, and he's going to 
captivate the whole world and the whole world is going to follow him and worship him and he's going to do great miracles and have great power and the second one the second beast who looked like a lamb but spake like a dragon he is going to be an evil man called the false prophet who's going to help the Antichrist and they're going to go against God and say terrible things against God. Even now we can see world leaders saying terrible things against God, saying that Jesus is not the only way to heaven, saying that Christians are hateful people. We see it all coming together. They're going to make a statue of the first beast. He's The statue is going to come to life and everybody's going to have to worship him. The prophet Daniel called this the abomination that maketh desolate. In other words, it's going to be a horrific, ugly, disgusting thing that destroys. And they're going to tell everybody, get 666 on your right hand or your forehead. Kind of like a microchip, I guess. Kind of like a, a credit card. It acts like a credit card. You can't buy or sell without it. But that is like a symbol of allegiance to Satan. And it will send everybody straight to hell. Even now we can see people are going against God. People are saying disgusting blasphemies against God. When you blaspheme God, it means you're going against him. And the beast and the false prophet, the antichrist and the false prophet are going to do just that. Satan is going to give them their power and the whole world is going to worship them. It's going to be an absolutely terrible. You can see here an angel is pouring out a bowl. Now John saw seven angels with seven bowls and every time they poured out the liquid in the bowls, there was a new punishment of God. Just like when Jesus opened the seven seals and every time an angel blew a trumpet, there were seven more punishments. This is what's going to happen. God's judgment is going to be poured out on the earth in full force and every time it gets worse. So this adds up for 21 judgments, 21 punishments of God on the earth. The Bible says the first one was this. The, one of them poured out the... Uh, the bowl, and the Bible says a grievous sore fell on people. A sore is like, you know, sores, bumps, scabs, terrible diseases on people. It like, you know, boils on their skin. It's going to be absolutely terrible. And people are going to be tortured by the pain. And the Bible says, second angel poured his bowl on the sea and the whole world all the seas of the earth became blood every single living creature died in the sea and then the bible says the third angel poured his his uh bowl out on the rivers and all the rivers became blood and nobody could drink anything and then the bible says that the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun and the sun became super hot kind of like global warming when you think about it and everybody was being scorched and burned because of the heat of the sun and the bible says people were blaspheming god that you would think people would say oh god please forgive us we sinned but no they just got more and more mad at god more and more evil and the bible says the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the seat of the beast and all throughout the world there was darkness now if you remember back in moses time with the, the, the punishments in egypt a lot of these are really similar like the water turning to blood and darkness and all this but yeah all around the world there was darkness again just like in the, the trumpets and then the bible says the, the uh, sixth angel poured out his bowl and all of a sudden the bible says something kind of weird happened john saw three frogs well they looked like frogs but they looked like frogs and they were demons and they came out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet and out of the mouth of the dragon. They were demons and they were bringing everybody to the great day of the battle of God Almighty. These demons were tricking people all around the world by doing miracles and now they were bringing people to the battle of God, to battle against God. And this was God's way of literally using these demons to bring them to battle against him. Because when you battle against God, it's really stupid because it's never going to work. And then the final bowl was poured out and as you can see the earth is shaking because there was a gigantic earthquake the bible says every single island drowned and there was no place found for them and the bible says there was lightning and thunder and it was just absolutely terrible millions of people died here you see something even weirder this is a woman riding on a beast now this woman was a very evil woman the bible calls her the great whore now if you're wondering what a whore is again i ain't explaining it go ask your parents and they probably won't let you watch these videos again. But anyway, uh, it's just a, it's basically a woman who does a lot of bad stuff. Anyways, it can also be a man. But that's a story for another time. Anyways, this woman was very evil. She had a cup in her hand that was full of filthiness and was full of the blood of the people that were killed for Jesus. You know, kind of like a, kind of like Stephen, how he got killed for Jesus. Well, anyway, her cup was filled with this blood. She rode on a beast that was red and it had seven heads. And the seven heads represented basically 
seven hills. And there's only one city in the world that is known famously for having seven hills, which is Rome. And all throughout history, the city of Rome has killed many, many Christians. So this represents Rome. But And also, the Bible says there was many waters that she was sitting on, which represents all the kingdoms of the earth. So basically, this represents the kingdoms of the earth. And the Bible says, sorry, the phone's ringing in the background, guys. But anyway, the Bible says God smashed the woman and the beast for doing evil things. And you can see fire in the background. God destroyed them, which represents God is going to destroy Rome. And God is going to destroy all the wickedness of the kingdoms of the world that have done wickedness and that have gone against him and that have killed his servants. In the centerpiece, we see this man. This man was named the Word of God. His name was Faithful and True. And he had a name written on his clothes. And it said, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. His eyes were like a flame of fire. Out of his mouth, there proceeded a huge sword. On his clothes were dipped in the blood, the blood of his enemies. He was riding on a white horse. He was coming down from heaven, and the armies of heaven were following him on white horses. Now, let me see if you can guess who the guy on the horse is. Yes, it's Jesus, guys. The man riding on the horse is Jesus. And remember the three demons, the three frog like the three frog like demons who came to gather everybody to the battle of the day of the battle of God Almighty. Well, they brought them to a mountain in Israel called Armageddon. And when they were there, the Bible says Jesus destroyed them. He destroyed the armies of the beast. And the Bible says he threw the beast the, the Antichrist and the false prophet alive into a lake of fire to burn forever day and night. And he destroyed the armies of people who went against God with the sword that came out of his mouth. And all the birds of the earth were filled with their flesh. And this shows Jesus came back as the conquering king and righteous judge. And he is the king of kings and lord of lords. And he finally destroyed the forces of evil. And the Bible says he reigned the world for a thousand years. What this one is about, you can see a man and a woman with some crowns. And and a guy stepping on the world, the man stepping on the world is the Lord Jesus. The Bible says he's going to rule the world for a thousand years. And all the people of God that have ever existed are going to reign with him. The Bible says if we suffer with him, we will reign with him. It's a beautiful thing that we can reign with the Lord Jesus. And we're going to reign for a thousand years. And the Bible says Satan, the dragon, is going to be bound in the bottomless pit for 1,000 years and he won't be able to get out and it will be awesome reigning with the Lord Jesus he will reign over all of the earth for 1,000 years guys the Bible says at the end of the thousand years Satan will once more go out to deceive the nations he'll go to trick the people to go against God and billions of people will be led against God but not the people of God the Bible says fire will come down from God and destroy them and then the Bible says that the whole world will be burnt up with fire. It will be gone. And the Bible also says that Satan, this is the awesome part. Satan, the devil, the dragon, the dark serpent, the father of lies, the roaring lion, the king of terrors, the dark one, the evil one, the wicked one, the enemy, the adversary. The Bible says this dragon, the devil, will be thrown, the tempter, he will be thrown into the lake of fire to be tortured day and night forever and ever. He will never get out. All his demons will be there too. God will judge them. God will punish them. All his dark angels, gone. They will be in the lake of fire, which is basically a bigger version of hell. They will be there forever. They'll never get out. So the Satan that started sin in the beginning, the Satan that, that you know, he did these things that possessed Judas, the Satan that did all the terrible things in this life that tempted us to sin, he will be burning there forever. I mean, doesn't this make you want to just praise the Lord Jesus? It should, because he will be gone forever. And the Bible says Satan will be dealt with once and for all, and he will be gone and God will win. But something very sad will happen to the people who decided to follow him and not believe in the Lord Jesus. Let's look at it. Here you can see there's a huge white throne and a huge light on it. The Bible says God will be sitting on this throne and all the people of the world will be gathered. Jesus said in John chapter 5 that everybody will come back to life. God will raise all the dead bodies of the world back to life. Some people who have done good will go to the resurrection of life and some people who have done evil will go to the resurrection of damnation. All these people will be gathered together. God will allow the Christians, his servants, to go into heaven, his children, the followers of Jesus. But so sadly, the people who decided to follow Satan will suffer the exact same thing he is suffering. The Bible says all these books were open and God read from the books every sin that these people ever did. And then God will open another scroll, a book called the Book of Life. And anybody whose name was not found in the Book of Life was thrown into the lake of fire. This is the thing, guys. It's very sad.
here is our last picture. You see, this is the wonderful thing. Now, through all, all this, so many people died and there was destruction and crazy stuff happening. But here, there is a very happy ending to the end of the world. A lot of people act like, oh man, it's just going to get so bad, man. But listen, it's going to get bad. But you know what? Ultimately, it's going to get better. And we can't focus on it getting bad. The Bible says God's love. The Bible says in the book of James, uh, I believe it was chapter 2, the Bible says, his mercy triumphs, rejoices against justice or against judgment, and God's love will prevail. And the Bible says John saw a new heaven and a new earth because the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Remember, God burned the earth up like it says in Second Peter chapter 3. Anyways, the Bible says there was a pure river of water of life clear as crystal. And then John saw a heaven, the new heaven and new earth coming down. And God said, behold, the tabernacle of God. God is with men. I'm kind of spitting everywhere right now, but just excuse that. The Bible says the tabernacle of God is with men. He saw a huge city come down, gigantic city, like in the shape of a cube. And the Bible says its foundations were made of pure jewels. The city was pure gold. There were three huge gates made of pearl on each side, which means there was 12 gates. Do the math, guys. Three times four. Anyways, come on. No, but anyways, it was pure gold and it was shining so bright and it was beautiful. The streets were made of pure gold and it was, it was just a glorious city and it was like shining like a jewel and the kings of the earth bring their treasure into it and the bible says the best thing about it was that god was there and the bible says god will wipe away all the tears of all the people in the world there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or any more pain god has made this place for christians his followers jesus followers and for god's children god's people god's one big family it's going to be awesome i don't want you guys to miss out on this there's two things you got to remember you don't want to go to the lake of fire and you don't want to miss out on the new heaven and new earth no more pain there will be no bad things there ever god will make everything new everything perfect this is beautiful god's promise to us that he will bring this place to earth and destroy death forever you guys are like man Oh my goodness, man, you gotta slow down, man. My brain, man, like brain fried, brain, like, whoa, man. Oh, what did you just say? Because there's so many crazy, interesting details. Here's a quick recap. First, Jesus appeared to John in his heavenly form and told him to write seven letters to seven churches. Then John saw God in heaven and all the people worshiping him and angels. And then John saw a lamb in heaven, which represented Jesus, and angels were worshiping him too, just like we should. Then Jesus opened seven seals of a scroll and unleashed seven punishments of God on the earth. Then seven angels blew seven trumpets and unleashed, and, and they unleashed seven more punishments of God. Then he saw a vision of a woman and a, giving birth to a baby and a dragon who tried to kill the baby. And then the dragon and then the woman escaped and then the dragon tried to kill the rest of the woman's children which represents how jesus cannot be destroyed by satan and how israel is going to be attacked by satan in the last days and then he saw some beasts and he saw two beasts and they're the antichrist and the false prophet the whole world is going to worship these evil leaders and they're going to make a statue that's going to come back to life and and, and trick people and destroy people and they're going to make everybody get a number on their hand or their forehead called 666 and without it they can't buy anything and then then he saw seven angels who poured these bowls on the earth and they unleashed seven more punishments of God and then he saw a whore sitting on a beast and God destroyed them which represents how God's going to destroy Rome and all the evil kingdoms and governments of the world in the end times then he saw Jesus come back with all the armies of heaven on a white horse destroy the armies of the uh uh hey it's a hair he, how he saw them destroy all the armies of Satan and all of them. And then Jesus ruled the earth for a thousand years with all the Christians. And then Satan was thrown into the lake of fire and the whole world was burned up. And then God judged all the people who did not believe in Jesus, who were not found written in the Lamb's book of life. They were thrown into the lake of fire. But then God makes a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. And there are no evil things there and no sin and no sadness and no death. Awesome. Oh, well, guys, I hope you enjoyed our series on the New Testament. You see, this last episode about the book of Revelation. The Bible says Jesus is going to come back. And before all these punishments of God are going to happen, the Bible says Jesus, something is going to happen called the rapture. Jesus is going to take all the Christians up into heaven before the terrible period of God's 21 punishments and everything else. And the Bible says that Jesus is going to return 
and it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be wonderful if you're a Christian. This is what it says in the book of Thessalonians chapter 1, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. It says that if you're a Christian, it's going to be wonderful. You see Jesus in the clouds, you're going to be so happy. But if you're not a Christian, it's going to be horrific. He's going to be your judge, not your friend. And that is not what you want to happen to you. Look, the Bible says it's going to be just destruction. God is angry. God is furious. All throughout the Bible, we see how God punishes people. But at the end of time, he's going to punish everybody. And there's going to be so much death. God loves people. And he is waiting so long for people to repent and believe. He's going to wait and wait and wait. Because he doesn't want anybody to be destroyed. He doesn't want anybody to go to the lake of fire or hell. It hurts him. The Bible says he does not willingly crush the children of men. In other words, he doesn't want to kill people. He doesn't want to throw people in hell. But if people still decide not to obey him, he's left with no choice. He has to be just and fair and punish people who do evil things. And this is going to happen. So the Bible says... Jesus is going to come back. He said, behold, I come quickly. If you're a Christian, it's so wonderful. The Bible, all throughout the Bible, talks about how God is going to come back and set the world right and destroy Satan and destroy sin and destroy evil and make the world a wonderful place. It's his promise. You can count on it. So if you're a Christian, keep praying and keep preaching the good news and look forward to this day more than anything because Jesus said it's very close. We don't exactly know when it will be, but it's very close. But if you're not a Christian, repent and believe in Jesus. Repent means turn away from your sin because he died for us in our place. Basically, we sinned. We deserve to go to hell and die. But God loves us so much. He became a human being. He died in our place. And three days on the cross, Jesus, three days later, he came back to life. So everybody who believes in him and leaves behind their sin will be saved. It's not by doing good deeds. It's only by believing and repenting. This is the wonderful good news. Then you will go to heaven when you die and God will forgive you of your sins. So as we see, we have seen a lot of stuff in our adventures. So I hope that you guys remember all this good stuff. So that's it. And uh, yeah, I'm going to see y'all later. See ya!